Thank you so much for staying with us. Just to let you know that that report by our political correspondent, Shion Okimbaloye, will feature in our subsequent bulletins. To other stories now, Peugeot Automobile Nigeria Limited has launched the latest in its car line. That's the new Peugeot Sport Utility Vehicle. The car, which is equipped with several features for driver safety and comfort, was recently launched in Lagos. Welcome. My name is Timmy. Everybody in this room is expectant, waiting for the unveiling of the newest car in the Peugeot series. Peugeot 3008 SUV for the Nigerian market is the 1.6 turbo horsepower engine vehicle. It has a fuel consumption of 8.9 liters per 100, kilo, per 100 kilometers. Finally, the Peugeot 3008 SUV is revealed. Once you are in a situation with driving and you have to apply the brake fast, automatically the hazard lights start blinking. We have the dynamic stability control and the electronic anti-skid system. The makers are particular about comfort and safety. The air cockpit, for instance, is one of the Peugeot signatures and is one of the most significant differentiator of this vehicle. If your hand, you know, is there, then, you know, it doesn't go, you know, no up, so that it doesn't get you injured. Now, it's just like, um, you know, you can, you can open the boot with your foot, you know, without having to kick it, you know, and then you can close the, the boot with the... Um, with, the, with your foot. Now, the idea is that if you are so close to the car, to the extent that the boot lead, you know, will hit your head, it won't come down. The Peugeot 3008 SUV won the European Car of the Year Award for 2017 and more than 30 other international awards. Peugeot says orders in the different colors of bronze, royal blue, steel, black, and several others are already being filled. Balaba Oil Producing Company, in collaboration with the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has presented its 2017-2018 Scholarship Award to host communities as part of its corporate social responsibility. At the presentation ceremony, the founder and president of the company says Balaba Oil is committed to ensuring that its host communities continue to benefit from its operations. <laughs> It's the maiden edition of the NNPC Belema Oil Joint Venture Scholarship Award for host communities in River State, holding in Port Harcourt, the state capital. The managing director of Belema Oil Producing, members of its management team, NNPC officials and the chairman of the event, Tony Graham Douglas, are here to present scholarships worth over 70 million naira to postgraduates, undergraduates, and post-primary beneficiaries from 10 communities. If you fail to grab these young ones who have the enthusiasm and that flair to pursue their academic dream, you're limiting the unraveling of future opportunities that they would have used to grow themselves and as well as the society. I don't think any young company in this river state has given this number, this volume, cutting across masters, first degree, and secondary school. <laughs> First, checks are presented to the secondary school beneficiaries. And then the undergraduate and postgraduate recipients. NNPC is a firm and strong believer in investing in the educational development of Nigerians. Hence, our commitment over the years through various joint venture partnerships and PSC concessionaires to support in educating the Nigerian populace in various ways. Outside, the president of Belema Oil explains that there is more to be done for youths in the Niger Delta. I've made a private submission um, to Mr. President, and I believe strongly uh, that as soon as he sees my submission uh, and okays it, we will be able to provide 12,000 direct employment for the youths uh, 
uh, not just in the community but the Nanjo Delta in general. I didn't expect any, you know, any, any of this from anybody and all that, you know. And then Belama Hoi in India, McMinnity the came around and decided to give me scholarship. I am very, very delighted. Aside education, Belama Oil is also investing in infrastructure and training, as well as contracts award for its old communities. A leading player in Nigeria's capital market, Africa Prudential PLC, has launched a technology-driven solution called the Personal Registrar. At the product launch, the management of Africa Prudential PLC says investors in Nigeria's capital market are in for a new experience in getting their records with ease. From the think tank of Africa Prudential PLC, a new USSD code for registrar services storms the Nigerian capital market. The aim of this USSD is to change the cumbersome experience of investors with the introduction of a personal registrar to bring flexibility and ease to the investor's lifestyle. The hallmark of this product is to bring registrar services to the doorstep of many shareholders of various client companies. With the launch of this USSD registrar code, Africa Prudential PLC says it has grown from a leading investor service provider to an innovative solutions hub. A code whereby everything is now at the palms of the shareholders. It means that you are now carrying your own registrar's office in your pocket. Through your mobile phone, you can find out any inquiries you want to make, quick inquiries about your dividend, about your shareholdings, to confirm also your bank mandate. In a nutshell, the USSD Registrar Code offers a wide range of possibilities for the 21st century investor with lots of user-friendly innovations. What this is to afford the investors now, on the go, that, that's why we christen it personal registrars. It's very easy to use. You just dial star 4018, hash, and then you follow the prompt, and then you can get investment about your information. One of the reasons why we've designed this product is to ensure that shareholders actually have in detailed information about their investments on the go. They can we are really happy for these innovations from APR, and we are very happy. We just hope that other registrars too will subscribe to this. Africa Prudential PLC says it is set to maintain its lead in the capital market with the coming on board of the personal registrar, which guarantees all investors, regulators, and shareholders access to their data in less than 60 seconds. The president nominates a new deputy governor for the CBN and has the details on business news. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Melinda, and welcome to Business News. President Mohamedou Buhari has nominated Mr. Edward Adamu as Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria to replace Mr. Suleiman Burrow, who retired in December 2017. According to a statement released today by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Mr. Femi Adeshino, a letter has since been sent to the, on the 26th of January to the Senate seeking his confirmation. Mr. Damu, who has spent 25 years at the CBN, was appointed in 2012 as Director of Strategy. He became Director of Human Resources in 2016. Here is a second Deputy Governor nominated by President Buhari in over three months after Mrs. Aisha Ahmed, who nominated, was nominated to replace Sarah Alade, who retired in March 2017, and both nominees are yet to be confirmed by the National Assembly. Fidelity Bank has been awarded the prestigious International Organization for Standardization Certificate. At a briefing here in Lagos, the executive management of the bank explained how the certification will accelerate its critical business functions. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
In the little bank, one of the top 10 most capitalized deposit money banks in Nigeria is in business for the delivery of exceptional services to its customers, a reason for clinching the ISO 22301 certification from the British Standard Institute. One of the major key milestones this is, um, sort of setting you apart from your competitors, but also in reinforcing um, the roadmap we heard that you spoke about earlier and that our central bank governor friends and colleagues here are the corollary to the certification is the implementation of the business continuity management system, which the board describes as critical for the realization of its corporate strategy. If you look at our very clear um, medium term strategy, we had said we would focus on digitization as enabler to help deliver our promises to our customers. We had said will be uh, running a more efficient system using balance sheet optimization. Fidelity Bank obtained its ISO certification in August 2017, a regulatory demand with September 2018 deadline seen as aiding the bank's resilience to sensitive disruptions. It's a great achievement and evidence of the bank's commitment and readiness to sustain their service delivery by overcoming any unforeseen disruption. It has a whole, a whole host of both preventive, corrective, detective, and uh, corrective procedures to make sure that the bank can survive and can continue business. Having attained this feat, the business continuity management system is expected to protect the bank's assets and customers. Disruption can come in any form. It could be a natural disaster, it could be flood, it could be fire, it could be kidnap, it could be terrorism, it could be a cyber attack. So this just ensures that there's continuity to our business. When CBN um, gave this directive to comply with this particular certification, we knew that it was something we needed to do. And because of the discipline in executing our strategies, um, we started in time and we've achieved it. Fidelity Bank prioritizes retail lending as part of its core business. The ISO 22301 certification will be expected to firewall its deposits against major cyber attacks. It's a bright start. On the first day in February at the local stock market, as demand for Dangote Cement shares rallies the market to a recovery at the close of business today. Let's hear more from Chimeze Obiwago. Thank you for joining us on the Stock Market Report. It's a positive start in the new month for the equities market as the All Share Index made a quick recovery from Wednesday's brief sell offs. The All Share Index went up 0.26%. Dangle Cement again is to be thanked for this as the five naira addition to its share price a few minutes to the close of trade pushed the index to 44,460 points. The market was in the red almost throughout the proceedings until the cement giant intervened, making the industrial sector the only gainer on the sectoral indices. Today's volume wasn't much higher than midweek. There was reluctance by investors to sell, so the market experienced moderate bargain hunting. Generally, the market witnessed some stability today, and traders say, given the slight upward movement, Friday and next week, we'll experience another rally. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwagu. Well, it's quite the opposite across major world stock markets. They have ended today mostly in the red as investors react to corporate earnings and track losses from Wall Street. Let's see the numbers for today. Thank you for watching Business News tonight. I'm Anne Umwawadu. It's back to you, Melinda. You first. First Bank. Many thanks, Anne.
Still ahead on the news at 10. Former FIFA president Sepp Blatter considers legal action against the World Football Governing Body to clear his name following his suspension in 2016. That's on Sports News. Join us again.